Hello, movie lovers. Welcome to the MTE Movie Podcast, episode number seven. I'm Jacob Bartley, and this is the movie podcast for Movie Talk Express, where you can find honest movie news, reviews, speculations, and opinions. If you want to check out any of our written articles, movie news, stories, and reviews, you can go to movietalkexpress.com. I'm here with my regular co-host, co-writer for Movie Talk Express, the movie news guru. Gio, how you doing tonight, man? We're doing great. I hope you all had an excellent 4th of July weekend. Yeah, we are rarely recording our episode in the evening, which is kind of nice. It's still really hot here in California. Super Sacramento, hot. Sacramento, yeah. We had to turn off the air because it's too hot, or the, it's too loud for the, so we're in the heat now. But, uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, Terminator Genesis and our Genesis. thoughts. Yeah, no, as Genesis. Geo says, you Genesis, got Genesis. But Genesis, spelt with a Y. We're going to give our thoughts and scores. And then after that, we're going to go into time travel movies, talk about them as a concept and whether time travel works as a concept in movies. And we're going to go over some of our best and worst time travel movies of all time. And then we'll go, we'll end it with our open mic segment where we each bring up a subject in the movie world that we've been wanting to discuss. So without further ado, uh, let's move into our Terminator Genesis review and reactions. Gio's going to start it off giving you the synopsis and some, a little bit of info you need to know before we talk about the film. No spoilers, please. All right. Well, uh, I'll do my best. Terminator Genisys is the fifth entry in the Terminator films, a franchise going back a little bit over 30 years now, uh, directed by Alan Taylor. So the film is basically... It, it serves as a reboot slash uh, sequel, sequel. To, to the first two films. Uh, in the future, the war against the machines is believed to be won by the humans, led by John Connor and Kyle Reese. However, prior to the victory, the machines have managed to send back a T-800 to the year 1984 to terminate a young Sarah Connor. To prevent this, John Connor decides to send back Kyle Reese to save his mother and everything they fought for. When Reese is sent back in time, he realizes it's not the same past he was told about. Sarah Connor is a well-trained, well-trained cyborg killer after being raised all her life by an older T-800 model. Soon, both Sarah and Kyle make a horrifying discovery as the future has changed when John Connor comes to them as a T-3000 cyborg. I reviewed Terminator Genisys. I gave it a... <laughs> 7.25 out of 10. Sorry, I keep saying Genesis. It's Genesis. Yeah, whenever he says Genesis, it means Genesis. He can't, yeah, he can't get rid I of that. Can't, I can't get over that why. So I reviewed uh, Terminator Genesis. I gave it a 7.25 out of 10. I thought it was a good action film. Uh, very worthy of standing next to the James Cameron films. Has a lot of action. Pays a lot of homage to the first two films. At least up to the halfway point. Good performances. I think it's one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's better performances as the T-800. I thought Amelia Clark killed it as Sarah Connor. She really took that iconic role and made it her own. And I know we all hate Jai Courtney, but in this film, he was pretty good. So, yeah, I, I liked it. Uh, it definitely had its problems, which we'll get into. But... Um, that's just yeah, I mean, I yeah. think you ended up liking the film a little bit more than I did, but yeah. I did enjoy it. It's getting horrible reviews online, which I totally disagree with. Right. And the reason I think I think critics went into this movie expecting to hate it, and no matter what, they're gonna hate it. So because they're they're gonna compare it to the original franchise, no matter what, and say it's not as good. So it had that going for it to start with. So no matter what, it's. It has that hate for it before they even see the movie. And I, it's not a great movie, but it's not a bad movie either. I, I personally enjoyed it. And it's there's some pretty bad stuff in there, though, you got to admit. While a lot of the stuff to work, I, I liked Arnold. He, you can tell he's evolved as an actor, and he has a lot more charisma now. And he's, he's able to make facial expressions and show them off more. And um, him and Amelia Clark had great chemistry, a great dynamic. And I did not mind Jai Courtney as much and as I normally do. And uh, 
Jason Clark was pretty good as well. He's always good, though. Right, but, as John Connor. I yeah. mean, I can't really get into the bad stuff without getting into spoilers, and we try to keep these reviews that we do on our podcast spoiler-free, but there's just stuff well, in there that, that yeah. really okay. didn't work for me. But overall, not a bad film. I, I would give it a 7 out of 10, honestly. Well, what happens is, okay, so this movie... Um, as we've seen in the trailers, there's a lot of stuff that we, we recognize, you know, from uh, from uh, Kyle Reese, you know, running through the store. And uh, um, we see the uh, what's his uh, the T-1000 from T2 uh, played by Robert Patrick. And this one, it's a uh, by Hung Lee, the, the Was Terminator, that the, the shapeshifter to be liquid. the same character uh, or just yeah. a different T-1000. Um, it's the same it's a t-1000 just different actor if that makes sense like but it's same not machine. supposed to be this that same exact t-1000 from terminator 2 oh no no no. okay the okay, one in this okay. film is uh, asian and and yeah, he comes yeah, in at a different probably. point he comes in in the timeline of the first movie not right. the second movie this so not yeah a spoiler different. because you see this no in no, the no different guy i was i i wouldn't mind getting into spoilers a little bit so let's from this point on we're going to get into some spoilers for about three to four minutes if you don't want to hear anything about uh spoiling terminator genesis just skip ahead four minutes or so so just because i want to talk about some of the things that didn't work so in the movie right they they have arnold uh they have they say that he went back in time before the first movie and rescued sarah connor right. as a nine-year-old girl did, if, unless I missed it, I didn't see any explanation of who sent Arnold back. Did you? No. That's one of the plot holes in the film. And, yeah. It um, doesn't yeah. make sense. They, so they didn't who discuss ended that, up sending... Yeah. Maybe we find out in sequels. Right. Potentially. But I don't know. That was one of the things that bothered me. And then just... Well, one some... thing with most action movies, the T-3000, Jason Clark's character, is supposed to be very powerful, right? Yeah. And he's chasing them around this whole time, and he can barely keep up with them. He's getting messed up by regular humans and a T-800 who's you know far less developed than him. And he can't even – he, in my opinion, he should have been able to easily kill them and – He's, like, getting pushed around the whole movie, and he's a T-3000. He's supposed to be the furthest adapted Terminator up to that point, and he was getting pushed around, which was stupid in my opinion. Well, I, I can't – I won't disagree with you there, but the way I look at it is <laughs> these aren't just humans. You have uh, Sarah Connor that's been trained all her life by a T-800. You have a T-800 who's uh, – you know, no, no pushover. And then you have and Jai uh, Courtney has been trained all his life. A soldier from by the future. Jason Clark. So it's really three against no, I one. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, I agree with you to that extent, but still he should have been able to handle them easily. And I think, I think, I think they said, uh, if, 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 if they kill Sarah Connor, there's no John Connor, right? Because that's another came, thing I didn't see. Future. He said, Sorry for spoilers again, but he said he could kill them and no, there would be no repercussions. He said that in the movie. So how does that make sense? I, see, we're going to have to know. see it another time <laughs> to understand any of this. It seems like we're bashing the film. We're not. There was good things in this movie. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It, it was a, actually a pretty fun movie. Just There was a lot of confusion that comes with the time travel aspect and... We're going to get into that when we discuss time travel movies in general and whether time travel works as a concept or not. So you know how we think, how we feel about the film. So I just want to ask you, Gio, where do you think they could possibly go with sequels? Because we know how the movie ended. And I just want to, I don't see where they can go with it. They didn't, they didn't leave anything open to assume that there could be sequels. But where do you think they could possibly go? Well, for one, uh, the fact that a T-800 still exists and Arnold Schwarzenegger means that there's an open door somewhere. Because, exactly, yeah, yeah. There's no more Skynet so far as we know. Everything's Supposedly, been blown blown but... up. Um, they introduced the idea of alternate timelines. So maybe that plays something, you know, because this film is all about people coming in from the future to the past and changing something um 
is John Connor really dead? We don't know. Um, I don't think so, especially with right. the alternate timelines. That killing that timelines John Connor doesn't destroy John Connor in all the timelines. But oh man, there is one thing. I don't want to get into too much spoilers. spoilers There's guys. one point in the story that could assume that John Connor was never born. But right. So in the sequel, here's my idea, and this is based off a rumor I wrote about a few months ago. I want to see Dwayne Johnson as the next Terminator. <laughs> that would be why pretty not? Cool. Dwayne Johnson is, I mean, big muscular guy he could play that serious role no he could i saw him in the movie faster that guy is intimidating when he when he has his mindset to it he could be very scary and he should be like the t the only thing the is t 10 million or the, something the rock has so much charisma where the terminators don't have any don't show any facial expressions they're stiff and they're they're robotic you know he's gonna have to hold back his charisma to have you seen that role. have you seen faster yeah, but that was so early in his acting career. That, that was like five years ago. He's developed ago. so much. Even since then, he's developed so much. But maybe acting stiff is uh, is uh, acting ability, so maybe his acting will help him in that sense. And I think we'll see that. Here's what I want to see. James Cameron, because the rights will go back to him, the by Terminator then, rights, right? by 2019. Yeah. I want to see James Cameron direct a Terminator with Dwayne Johnson. I'm looking at what James Cameron did with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They're pretty much the same guy. I mean, you know, Dwayne Johnson probably has more uh, of an acting skill than uh, Schwarzenegger did at that time, you know, during For his sure, age. Yeah. And you know what? Like, put James Cameron with Dwayne Johnson, you're going to get the same success, if not better, with the first two Terminator films. No, I, I could see that. If I'm not mistaken, aren't they making two more sequels? They, while they have the right they green the two sequels because i mean yeah because they're gonna try to push well. out as much as they right. can before the rights revert back to james cameron okay right so we're we're possibly gonna get two more movies with arnold which i would love i liked arnold in this movie a lot right so yeah. as long as we get a couple more with arnold then i'd be fine with that i i just as far just as these think films the rock has too much you want to cast somebody who who you who has limited acting abilities in the Terminator role? I think like a Dave Bautista. I think he would be perfect for a Terminator. Mm. But I I wouldn't mind like like I said earlier, The Rock can play that stiff robotic role if he wants to. So it could work. Why not put both of them in there? The right. Rock and Bautista. Yeah, have one as cool. a villain and have one as a main guy. <laughs> well, all right. Did you have anything else to say regarding Terminator Genesis? Um, it's a. Uh... I think it's a good movie, you guys. Check it out. If you love the first two films, uh, you, you, you'll you like this one uh, for, for what it tries to you know do and be. Ultimately, it tries to just do so much, and uh, it ends up not being able to carry the weight on its shoulders. But still a good film, uh, some worthy performances, and uh, as a mindless flick, you, you'll have a good time. I think. Yeah, you'll... don't let those bad reviews or that rotten tomatoes score scare you it's not as bad as it's being portrayed online it's just it's being over criticized unfairly it's a pretty good movie it's a fun time at the theaters if you like the old ones you're not going to regret seeing it all right from there we're going to move into just time travel movies in general there's been a lot of time travel movies whether you notice it or not um and even if not full-on time travel movies there's been a lot of movies with time travel aspects in it so with that i just want to go over some of the the best and worst time travel movies of all time not necessarily our favorite but just you know based on general consensus consensus what the best and worst are so of course you have terminator 1 terminator 2 those are big ones uh of course the back to the future franchise that's arguably the most iconic time travel movies at least the first two yeah and then we had of, of recent we've had x-men days of future past which was a great movie uh, and they use time travel very well um the first hot tub time machine i would argue is a good movie it's 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 funny it's original it's fr refreshing it, it was pretty good and you know maybe the first reboot of the star trek films the jj abrams one i believe the first one came out in 2009 if i'm not mistaken correct but 
it's not necessarily a time travel movie, but it uses time travel in a an important way to further the story. And yeah, those are some of the the best ones. Can you think of any of the the best uh, time travel movies of all time? Um. Well, let's see. You could say Groundhog Day. Yeah, there you because, go. That's you know, you're he right. goes through an entire day. Yeah, back to see, the beginning like, of I, the day. I didn't even look any up. I just you know thought of the ones that I. Another I one remember. is uh, Pleasantville, with um, Reese Witherspoon and Tobey Maguire, where well, they I'm go not back familiar, to the, but they go back to nineteen fifties black and white. Um, really? Yeah. Wow, that's Pleasantville. interesting. I didn't know about that. Uh, you mentioned Time Cop, right? I did not know. Yeah, John Claude Van Damme's is, Time Cop. It, it's not. It's not. I'm, it's I'm not recognized by like critically uh, yeah. a good movie, but I mean, it's a cult classic, especially among Van Damme's films. Uh, that's one that stands out. Uh, you said Back to the Future, um, yeah. and uh, well, that's all I have right I now. I mean, I'm I obviously there's well. there's probably more that we are leaving out. Obviously, we didn't mention a few because we're gonna like mention our favorites they aren't necessarily recognized as great movies but we have a few that we you know hold close to our hearts um just a a few that are good that i I wanted to mention they're not necessarily my favorite but uh like we talked about earlier today looper is a great movie in my opinion it's not necessarily one of my favorites but i really like that movie and it's a really good movie and uh also uh i think it came out last year or two years ago it's a movie called about time it got bad reviews generally and a lot of people say it's not a good movie but i i didn't mind it as much as most people did it starred dom hall gleason who we saw earlier in ex machina and who we're going to see in star wars later this year and rachel mcadams and if you didn't know it was one of margot robbie's first roles in that movie really yeah she's in the beginning of the movie as a girl that he has a crush on and he's like i think he's dating her at first before he meets rachel mcadams if i I might be mistaken on that but i'm pretty sure um yeah i didn't mind about time it's pretty cool and it's literally all about time travel in in more of a romantic comedy way um so before we get into our favorite i just want to our favorites i just want to talk about what are some of the the bad time travel movies of all time you know that that are recognized as bad movies well Watching it at, during its time, the butterfly effect with Ashton Kutcher. Um, <laughs> at, during that time, wow. I liked it, and I remember watching it a few years ago, and I was just like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> did you? Do you know? Didn't I tell you about my list earlier?" I think you did. I'm not yeah, entirely okay. Sure. Never. Oh, you you guys will know what I'm talking about in a second when he's right. When he's done. Yeah. Um. I, I. It's. It's still you know watchable during that time. It was oh, one sure. of my. That's your opinion, one of my favorite that, movies. You know, and yeah. and now I look back at it, I'm just like you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's some people still like it. Some people don't. You know, and um. Well, I mean, n- none really come to mind. I mean, I could mention off uh, quite a bit a few movies, yeah. but then I mean, they're movies that you know. Of I don't. course, there's. Terminator right. Three, yeah, the, Rise of the Machines, right, yeah, and Terminator Salvation, yeah, and I haven't seen it, but you talked about it a couple weeks ago. A uh, Hot Tub Time Machine Two, that could oh, yeah. pos- quite possibly be the worst time travel movie of all time, if according to you. It's no, no, um, no. <laughs> it doesn't even let's, qualify. Let's just, yeah, yeah. So we'll move into some of our personal favorites and guilty pleasures. Um, one of my favorite time travel movies of all time which i will argue is a good movie is the butterfly effect i really like that movie and i think well ashton kutcher isn't the greatest dramatic actor i think he gave a solid performance in that amy smart's really good in that movie as well i i don't see why someone would consider it a bad movie i there's so many cool things in that movie that have been that time they use time travel so well that other movies haven't used and it's it's such it's it's very intense movie and it's like it's a thriller and it's like it keeps you on the edge of your seat the whole time and i love all the different time eras he goes into or different timelines he goes into and how each one has a a different effect each time he he tries to save one aspect of 
of the world the timeline that he's in and he ruins another aspect of that timeline and it's very intriguing i think it's a good movie i'll argue anyone who says it's not but um also another one of my guilty pleasures i would say and thinking about it now as when i was a kid i thought it was a really good movie but i read i read up on it and well i'm talking about uh, a movie called the time machine it starred guy pierce it came out I want to say the early 2000s but uh i really like that movie and it's i would consider it a guilty pleasure of mine because after reading up on it i do agree in the end it all fell apart but the first hour of that movie is amazing in my opinion and then of course there's a uh, x-men days of future past was one of my favorite movies of last year i really liked it so what are your some of your favorites and guilty pleasures as far as time travel movies go uh, one of my favorite, one of my hands down favorite films is the movie Frequency, which has stars Dennis Quaid and uh, Jim Caviezel. Uh, it's a father son film uh, where uh, he discovers the son Jim Caviezel discovers that he can use uh, like a radio to talk to his father in the past and really? alter a timeline. Wow, I've never He's, seen it. He saves his Not father. Lie. Um, it's a really good movie. I like it. Um, so that's one of my, um, another one would be Click starring, uh, Adam Sandler oh and, uh, my. Kate is, Beckinsale. Would you, is that considered a time travel movie? He's using the remote to fast forward, rewind time. Oh, you're time right. It definitely is. I skip forward. I, that should be on my favorites list. Yeah. I love that movie. I really do. It's one of those mindless wow, funny comedy. I, I really Sandler love that movie. I can't believe going I didn't on. think of that. Yeah. And uh, another one of my guilty pleasures, uh, Ghost of Girlfriend's Past. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, Emma Stone's who's first the, role, Jennifer lead, Garner. Who's the lead female? In Jennifer that? Garner. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Matthew McConaughey is just just playboy. Yeah. His Funny father is Michael Douglas. Funny how he used to do so many romantic comedies. Oh, uh, yeah. That's one of his last ones. Oh, Good man. movie. Yeah. It's so hot in here, man. It's uncomfortably hot. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Welcome to California, everybody. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, so I just want, I'm just curious real quick, what do you think of time travel as a concept in general? Do you think it, it works in movies? It do, does it hurt a movie more than it helps it? Is, is it too risky? Risky? Yes. Helpful. It depends on how you use it because a lot of, all right, time travel is all about, you know, taking one plot line and turning it into multiple plot lines. And it's all about balancing those plots, making sense of it, leaving no plot holes and making like, you know, like clear understanding, you know, full cycle, the whole thing, you know, yeah, film. So with time travel, the problem is, is that, you know, uh, you, you, you put more on your plate than you can handle, you know, uh, whatever that analogy is. No. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They try to bite off more than they can chew with right with time it. travel like it's it's so risky i would say there's there's more bad time travel movies than good ones I, right i would say and you see the concept and ideas in the film and what they're trying to pull off that's why most of these films i don't have a problem with you know yeah. even the bad ones but it's still like i mean the terminator films um you know, uh, frequency, those are up there for me um, because they tell a, a good story. They don't try and overcomplicate things because when you're sitting there as an audience member, you're trying to keep up with all this stuff going on. And then when you look back at it and you're like, wait, why did, what happened with that person? Or, you know, how did this happen when that happened? You know, it's a problem that uh, Terminator Genesis had, you know, halfway through the film. It just, it gets too overcomplicated. Yeah, I agree. It's it gets messy. The execution, you know, you see the concept and idea, but in overall, it's just you know, it's it ends up being more than you can you know chew. Yeah, that's the thing. It gets when it gets way too complicated. That's when you have a problem. I think you have to keep it. If you're gonna go the time travel route, you're gonna you have to keep it simple and make sure you cover cover all your tracks. Make sure you don't contradict anything that you said happened before and i feel like even some of the good time travel movies have trouble doing that 
have trouble avoiding contradictions because it's really hard. Even I love X Men Days of Future Past, but mm -hmm. as we know, there's multiple things within the entire X Men timeline that are contradicting each other. For example, in X Men Three, Bolivar Trask was played by I forget the actor's name, but an Afri African American gentleman. Uh, Do you remember in, his name? He was in Commando. Uh, uh, he was in Predator. Um, if you don't mind, would you look that up real quick? I think it's Bill Duke. Yeah. Anyways, and then in in X Men: Days of Future Past, he's played by Peter Dinklage, and it's supposedly in the same canon, in the same world, in the same timeline. So, Brian Singer, the director of X Men One, X Men Two, X Men: Days of Future Past, has came out and said, you know, fans are just gonna have to let that stuff go. You know, you can't hold on to it. Just allow them to be creative and you know make the best movies possible. Which with Days of Future Past, I'm fine with, but it just it can get too confusing. Like Terminator, that's when Terminator Genesis started to fall apart. Is when it got way too confusing with the time travel. So overall, I love time travel as a concept. Like when I was a kid, I watched The Time Machine and Butterfly Effect so many times. I and that's a reason why I love those movies be, is because of time travel. So I think it can work. I think it's an, intri an intriguing concept, and I hope that Hollywood and directors and filmmakers will continue to use time travel, but use it right, be careful with it, and don't try to do too much or get too confusing. Did you have anything else to say regarding uh, time travel as a concept in films? No, just uh, be smart about it, directors. Yeah, for sure. You know, good. All People right. are in the movies to escape, yeah. not to get a headache. <laughs> exactly. Well, that'll end our time travel movie discussion, and we're going to close it out with our open mic segment where each of us, each of uh, each panelist, just me and Gio today, uh, we're going to introduce a topic in the world of movies. It can be anything in the world of movies, any news topic, anything we want to bring up. And, you know, we don't know what each other's topics are, which is the fun part about this. So we kind of surprise each other with a topic. So, Gio, let's start with your topic. What do you got for me today, man? I got Marvel and directors. So this okay. news this news just broke a couple hours ago. Um, Ava DuVernay, who directed Selma, will not be directing Black Panther. Is that for sure? Or any Marvel movie. That's very, Con very confirmed. disappointing. Confirmed by uh, Selma Ava DuVernay. Selma is a great movie. Yeah. So she confirmed it in an interview, her own words, saying uh, there's creative differences, and uh, she loved what she saw from the Black Panther film so far, as far as the script, meeting with Chadwick Boseman, talking with Feige, but she will not be directing any Marvel movie. Wow. And talk a little bit about that, and also, why? It, how does this make Marvel look? And are they the bad guy for... <laughs> you know turn pushing these directors away and wanting to stick to their guns as far as creativity not at all i don't blame marvel for doing this we saw it with we've seen it with a lot of their directors um the one that comes to mind is edgar wright who mm -hmm. originally was attached to ant-man for almost a decade and due to creative differences he departed from the project and now we have a uh, Peyton redirecting Ant-Man so while I was upset that Edgar Wright departed from Ant-Man and while I'm upset that Ava DuVernay is not directing Black Panther or another Marvel movie I don't blame Marvel for doing this because no matter what these are their movies they have to be careful they have their vision they know what they want to do with these movies if a director's not on board to do what they want to do and they have to be careful because they're Every movie that comes out is within their Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they have to be careful and make sure everything ties together. They can't have anything contradict any of their other movies. So while it does upset me that she's not going to be directing a Marvel movie, I don't think Marvel's a bad guy. It's it's part of the business, and Hollywood is ultimately a business, and they got to be careful and protect their properties. Yeah, these directors, screenwriters, they know what they sign up for when they uh, work with Marvel. It's like what Josh Whedon said um, in a recent interview. Marvel's movies are more of like TV episodic, you know. Yeah. 
they're um, it's a continuation of yeah, each. There's the small story. films within this gigantic universe where it's all connected, and sometimes that means you know not delivering a full you know character focused story. You know because you have to t- take considerate of you know plant seeds going into the future. You know where are they going to go from here, so on and so forth. So. It is disappointing. Um, I was uh, lobbying for her to, uh, you know, direct Black Panther. I thought she was a great. Or bit. Captain Marvel, or, or Captain whatever Marvel. she could. Di- yeah. She could direct any. It doesn't have to be a female movie or an African American character movie. She right. could have direct any movie. I'd be happy with her directing. Yeah, but I mean, for me, just seeing, you know, from from what I've seen, of yeah, Selma, of course, yeah. You know, I thought she could do that to another. No, sh- I'm sure. Yeah. I'm I'm sure she would be happy to, you know portray an african-american character and uh, a character that represents so much african-american culture as well i'm sure she would be proud to do that but right. she doesn't necessarily have to direct those movies you right. know yeah gotcha so was that it for your topic yeah yeah so it's pretty funny i last week we we started the open mic segment and i tried to stay away from the comic book genre and last week you and jake both had comic book topics and i didn't but Funny enough, I have a comic book topic, and it has to do with Marvel as well. So, bring it. I saw something today. So, before I get started, just this kind of uh, goes into the TV side of Marvel with the Marvel Netflix series. But like I've said before, any discussion regarding Marvel TV for me qualifies as a movie discussion because it's all tied into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Marvel movie universe. So, apparently, there's a rumor going around that Marvel is having trouble with developing the Iron Fist series. Did you hear about this? I did not, no. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Marvel released Daredevil earlier this year, and then they have Daredevil Season 2 coming with a AKA Jessica Jones series, a Luke Cage series, an Iron Fist series, all leading up to a series t- called The Defenders, which was a comic book team, or a team in the comic book, Marvel Comics. And so Iron Fist was supposed to be the fourth show, and it's still going to be, but they're apparently they're having trouble on the origin of Iron Fist and whether or not they want to stick to his mythology and certain aspects of his mythology and his origin. And the rumor is that they don't want they don't know how to introduce these mystical, magical elements. And it's kind of funny because Technically, we've already seen something within this realm with Thor. With they explain magic as being science in their world, and then how do you explain like the Scarlet Witch and her powers? That's mystical, magical elements. And then we have Doctor Strange coming next year. So, and if I'm not mistaken, the Doctor Strange and Iron Fist characters are connected, and they have their origins are somewhat intertwined. So, my question is. How is Marvel going to integrate these mystical elements into such a grounded world that Daredevil created, that the Daredevil show created? How is those, how are those mystical elements going to fit into that? And then how is it going to tie into Doctor Strange, in your opinion? Well, they can't make this mystical art stuff too over the top because it's obviously for Netflix. And the only reason why you put someone like uh, Iron Fist on Netflix is because you want to do things that you can't do in the movies. Otherwise, he is a little he's a lot darker than like Iron Man Thor, you know, right? Um, as far as I'm not too familiar with the character, neither am I, honestly. I'm really, but I know that Marvel is well planned for Doctor Strange and um, you know, Scott Derrickson directing it. And um, they've already, like, like you've said, they've introduced a little bit of the the mystic uh side of uh the universe with uh Scarlet Witch and uh. What's who Thor? Yeah, oh, Thor. Duh. Yeah, <laughs> the, duh. So um, I honestly don't know, honestly, um, how the, how they're gonna do this. I just could you see a character like Daredevil fighting next to and with a character like Iron Fist, where his 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 fists are have magical powers, quote unquote, give him super strength. Well, yeah, I mean, because we're gonna see it because eventually. Daredevil is no. Hawkeye or Black Widow, you know, he has heightened senses. Yeah, he does. He has enhanced abilities, of 
course. Yeah, so. yeah. So he can he can do things that the average shield agent or even you know the the lower level Avengers yeah. members you know. Okay. So he has an advantage, you know. Um, so can I see him, uh, you know, in battle next to Iron Fist? Sure. Yeah, it just makes me think because if Iron Fist has mystical powers, then he's going to be so much more powerful than a Daredevil, you know? It's similar, like, obviously Thor is a lot more powerful than Daredevil, so it's just very interesting to me. I don't I don't know how we're going to see this come to fruition in the TV world that Marvel has established. Well, Iron Fist and uh, Doctor Strange are supposed to be going to be dropping at the same time. Yeah, and so. I heard that Doctor Strange could potentially appear in the Iron Fist series, which... I, could, I won't I can't see that but I could see an Iron Fist in a Doc Strange movie right so we'll see yeah. we'll see what happens with that all right well there you go there goes our Terminator Genesis uh discussion time travel movies uh and our open mic segments all Marvel apparently this week and just want to thank everybody for listening and just if you want to check out our blog you can Check us out on MovieTalkExpress.com. You can catch us on Facebook at MovieTalkExpress, on Twitter at MovieTalkEX. You can find me on Twitter, Jacob Bartley, at Jake Ryan Bartley. And don't forget to follow our YouTube channel, MovieTalkExpress, and hit that like button if you liked it. Gio, where can they find you online? You guys can find me on Facebook at Giorgio Ramos, on Twitter at Giorgio Ramos24. And check out MovieTalkExpress.com. We'll be dropping movie news every day. Thank you guys for listening. From Movie Talk Express, we'll see you next week.